Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very, terrible. Very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocates and to a hotbed of atomic issues. I'm striking the match by zeroing in on the pen chop pension matter. When will all this chop chop end? I hear you say. Victoria is stirred up by the hate speech bill and its ramification. We can't sound the alarm bell enough on this as far as I'm concerned. Chuka has had it up to here with his sofa head wahala and is now resorted to singing about it original sofa head. John, or Dr. Boala as he's known, is a first time advocate, but as you will soon see, has been long prepared for this. We're tackling the wasteful phenomena that is called the brain drain. Ekene is on a women's advocacy tip. However, I should be careful before she will soon warn me that it's not a women's advocacy, but a people's advocacy. She has titled it All for One. So the countdown has begun in earnest. We initiate blast off after the break. Eating more than is adequate, especially in the face of scarcity, for the majority could be term greed or gluttony. Pen chop, pension. I recently stumbled on a letter dated the 17th day of October 2019, purportedly written by former governor of Zamfara State, Honorable Abdul Aziz Yari, where he was complaining about non-payment of his retirement upkeep of 10 million naira monthly. Hmm, that's heavy. He stated that the last time he received the said sum was in July, and requested that by the pension law of Zamfara State, his pension and upkeep allowance are not in the categories of privileges that can be truncated without any justifiable reason. <laughs> Grammar. It's not news that Nigeria spends close to 40 billion naira on pension for former governors and former deputy governors in Nigeria annually. Majority of these former chief executives are drawing this humongous payout despite the lean resources of their states. Wickedness. These allowances, which are similar in nature across the various states, ranges from vehicle renewal and maintenance housing allowance and salaries, medical benefits for themselves and their families. According to the recent survey, over 36.3 billion was expended on servicing 47 former governors from 21 states of the Federation in pension payment and provisions of houses for staffs and motor vehicle replacement between three and four years. According to the said report, payment of pensions to former governor for over a four year cycle are highest in Bochi, Rivers, Aquaibom, Quara, Zamfara, Edo, and Lagos State, with former governors drawing well over 40 billion naira over these four years. Even poor states like Quara that can't pay workers' salaries are not left out. What a country. Shameful. These pensions and allowances are side the prescribed 300% severance packages for governors by the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission, as provided for in the Certain Political Office Holders and Judicial Officers Remuneration Act. A look at the pension law of Rivers, Quara, Edo, Zamfara, Lagos, Bauchi, and Aquaibon will reveal a lot of similarities. But I will summarize all by peeping into the pension for former governors, laws of Lagos State, as a benchmark. Now, let me shock you. Listen to this 100% annual basic of equivalent salary for life for a former governor. The former governor gets six new cars every three years, even if he's opening a car shop. The deputy gets three or five cars every three years. The former governor gets a house in Lagos and in Abuja, any place of his choice. Why the deputy gets a house in Lagos only? Free medical care for the governor, his deputy, and their families for life. They are also entitled to cooks, steward, gardeners, and domestic staffs, all pensionable. Worst of all, 300% of annual basic salaries every two years as financial allowance for the governor and his deputy. Also, 
100% of annual basic salaries as house maintenance allowers. The house you build, you still maintain it for them. Two DSS officials, one female officer, of course, for madame, and eight policemen. No wonder they are none left to guard the rest of us. Deputy Governor gets one DSS operatives, two policemen. And then, listen to this also. 25% of annual salaries for personal assistance. You must get personal assistance. 30% of annual basic salaries as car maintenance. So those six cars, you still maintain them for them. In spite of what they had taken while in office. 20% of annual basic salary also as utility allowance. No name. Pensionable drivers, no limit to the numbers. And finally, severance benefits, like 300%. Despite all these, some of these former governors still turn the Senate into a retirement home, while others are ministers, all drawing salaries in spite of these pensions. Unfortunately, the entitlement they enjoy are far more than what political office holders in developed and rich countries enjoy. More of why we will continually remain a developing country. You can't close your eyes to this ugly trend and pretend to fight corruption. It's impossible. We all must realize that we are the ones in opposition in Nigeria and not the political office holders in either APC or PDP. And we can't build a strong and very country where public institutions work by empty the state treasury to take care of a few who govern the state for a maximum of eight years. Why those that served the states laying during their youthful years for 35 years are dying by installment for lack of pension? My advocacy today would be if we remove the houses in Lagos and Abuja, the 300 and 100% of annual basic for furniture allowances and house maintenance allowance, cut down the number of cars to two by five years and reduce the number of policemen to just two, we would have saved enough to fund or fix some of these dilapidated roads and abandoned public hospitals. Wow. And, uh, yep. wow. This, this kind of you know, makes you feel ashamed to be Nigerian ashamed to be African and ashamed to be black. And the narrative that the white man... I think man, it's a black problem. No, no, no let me, that, that's why, let me finish. And that's why the narrative that the white man weaves about us not knowing what to do, not having the capacity to do anything, in other words, just being unintelligent and not able to do these things, starts to ring true when you listen to what he has just read out. Sorry, um, I, I want to challenge you on that no, before no, no, you no. go any further. No, no, no. I know I was in, I, I yes. know there was a period where they had the sleaze matter in the UK, where the bankers and the governors, people were having houses in different parts of England. So it's not that, which, it's, not, which it's human nature. There no, was a which, time no, when they no, had no, the no, sleaze No, which, no, which no, not talking about no, which people. Um, these no, were not, these were public office holders. These were not public office holders. No, but even when they had governors, MPs, that were having two houses. On on pension. They were having two houses. They were MPs in the UK. No, MPs in the UK. They were having two houses in London and in the suburbs. Yes. So it's human nature. No, 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 things does not make me greedy. Absolutely. No, no, no. Don't, he's yeah. he's talking about greed now. He's not talking about just liking No, or, no, that's why I gave you the want. example of people who had two houses. They were exploiting the system. They were, and they were exploiting the system for, the, for, do you know the kind of money they were exploiting the system for? Those some of them were some of them were almost having to resign as MPs for for five thousand pounds. No, no, the point for, is that it for exists 2, in human nature. Pounds. Chuka, but let's be honest, it exists in human why nature. Are we, just why are we? Why have we got it better? Let's not no, make no, it a black man's No, 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 no. It is a black man's problem because why are we? Why, why is our system? Uh, because I think this, this is somehow <laughs> taken away from the fact that because this is tied to pension. You will not find it in some of these European countries where they would tie to Because their systems are much more transparent than ours. I think. I, I, I think so, it takes away from the strength of the advocacy so to, to start add, looking at it as if it's To add to what you are somehow. saying is that, it's not necessary. If, that yeah. if since it is human nature, or especially black man's <laughs> nature, to want to do this, not, the, system, the system should find a way of checking this essence. That's where we come but to an where agreement. But the, where the system mm. is the one creating the essence, yes. legally and, speaking, yes. then... Yes. You can now begin to say it's a black man nature. No, That's I would never say that. But please carry on. I just, we'll wanted, to, I just wanted to obstruct let that let argument. Me turn, let me turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, a country that is still de receiving development aid yes. from foreign countries to address 
primary health care problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what they call primary health care? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> the ones that are in the rural areas. Yes. Not really teaching hospitals. Yes. yes. Primary things. Then. Look at how large you're living. Few people yes. that have served the state corner of these resources. You know, there's also another problem. What I think is a bad man, what I think is a black don't go man's there, problem. Because no, 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 I don't agree it. that, I don't agree that corruption is a black man. That's no, what I say, black man. It's it's what, is, what, man is, what is, an in, what is insane like, yeah. is the level, the kind of provision <laughs> When you say 300%. Yes. I mean, when do you... Do you Three times your salary. You're not even yes. shocked that you should say that. Then 100% no, 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 every two outside. years. Let me even come in and say Things that. Things are supposed to be percentages yeah. of... Originals. Yeah. That is, the is if they say twenty-five percent, we say three times your quarter. salary. Yes, but three times three hundred percent. No, but uh, uh, let me just remind you. What I wanted to make is. It's a tag team. It's, it's, it's a premeditated daylight robbery. What you're looking at is because it took several people oh, yes. to, to, to hold hands to get this thing. So to you have the, the uh, executives uh, 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 who are greedy. I'm coming. The, the executives who are greedy. Right. You have the lawmakers who are happy to position themselves Correct. because they know that their time They're is coming. They're going to get us. You know, it's, it's all hard to, you uh, have to come a ring say, of And I must quickly people. add that most of these laws were the quickest laws ever passed in the history Absolutely. of the country. Yes. That of Aquaibon was passed in 13 days. Oh my yeah. God. River State yeah, 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 was yeah, almost right, the yes. same day. Yeah. Yeah. Look at minimum you wage, how long yes. we waited yes. to yes. approve this. Yes. 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 And, 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 uh, sorry. sorry, what's also leading to this is, is because they don't actually make use of the fund properly. If things are set in place, if right. you have good roads, yes. good hospitals, you will not be thinking of collecting huge amount of money or have a cover for life for health care. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You're covering yourself yes. because okay, you see. just walk into yeah, yeah, You're yes. subsidizing yes. for yourself. Then Correct. Number, number Which two, is what we're all doing. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at, we spoke on education, but you look at water, especially this is Amphara, and you know most of those places don't have drinking water. Right. And it costs nothing to sink a bohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you take you that 10 million less than that you're giving the governor every thousand. month, mm -hmm. you can use that 10 million to seek 20, 20, 20 boreholes. Bore 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 my, my own even, the thing that really shakes my mind is to say, are we not seeing that this thing is not sustainable? Even if you did it for one year, you know it's cumulative. Yes. They so don't every care. governor will keep piling their weights behind oh, correct. this. How Unless can you one dies, it? one one Unless we one all become governors away, and stand in line, then that one is out it's of crazy. the bill, you know. It's but, crazy. So, but what are yeah. we to do? Because I always want to get to that. What are we to do? Point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What we need to do is cut down on all of these expenses. That's why I said that my advocacy we should be. Was in our hands. Uh, look, we we keep advocating for it, and uh, you educate the people so they know when to vote <laughs> on the right people. So who we now cut down on these expenses? Thank God, Zamfara had repealed theirs, which is very good. No, you know, and it, yes, yes, they have. During, they this, have. during this period, they quickly yes, they distanced themselves from immediately, him. Immediately, they have repealed that. As though they didn't know he was doing it in yes, the first place. And, and the man collected 300 million as severance package. Yes. And, and well, well. Like I said in my advocacy, we can't close our eyes to this ugly trend and pretend to fight against corruption. After the break, Victoria is certainly not for closing eyes, ears, or even mouth. She challenges what she sees as a trend in shrinking our civic spaces. Hey, Vicky, good to have you on board. <laughs> Thank you, Liberals. Welcome to The Advocate. There's something certainly vital about preserving our civic spaces. It speaks to liberty and our core rights. I'm going to talk about the rising rate of shrinking civic spaces in Nigeria. I'll mention a few names. Omoye Leshoware, Awa Jalingo, El Zagzaki, IG Wala, Abubaka Idris, popularly known as Nadiata, Jones Sabiri, Olawale Bakare, and so forth. One dot connects all of these names. They are all in detention for exercising their civil liberties and fundamental rights to free speech, free assembly, and free association. So the begging question is, are the spaces for civic engagement including for civil society aspirations, expanding or contracting in Nigeria. Lately, Nigeria has witnessed a marked increase in the exercise of overbearing governmental power, which has not only created an atmosphere of fear in the country, but has always also considerably contracted the spaces for civil society and civic engagement. Government agents, including security forces, have particularly targeted bloggers, activists, journalists, and um, social critics demanding accountability for official impunity. The names I mentioned earlier are just part of the list of over 200 persons that have been arrested since 2015 and has been documented on a database, www.unclosingspaces.org. 
So the clampdown on bloggers and activists is not being compounded by the legislative proposals that hold animals power to curtail basic human freedoms, stifle free speech, and control dissent on social media. Examples of such legislative proposals um, are the Internet Falsehood Manipulation and Other Related Matters Bill 2019, popularly called the Social Media Bill that is trending now, and the Prohibition of Hate Speeches and Other Related Matters Bill, popularly called the Hate Speech Bill. What are these bills for, you'll be asking. The first bill promises to suppress falsehoods expressed online, counter the effects of such false communications and transmissions on the internet and sanction offenders. The second bill aims to establish an independent national commission for the prohibition of hate speeches and outlaw unfair discrimination, particularly based on ethnic differences. So the punishment for various offenses created by these legislative proposals range from pain fines running to millions of naira up to life imprisonment and death penalty. These bills have raised a lot of dust for various reasons. First, the majority of the legal provisions in these bills have already been fully addressed by existing legislation. The Nigeria's 1999 Constitution, Nigeria's Cybercrime Act of 2015, Nigeria's Criminal and Penal Codes, and many others extensively cover the field and made robust provisions that both spelled out punishment, created enforcement mechanisms for addressing similar infractions and irregular conduct on the social media, and including the internet. So Nigeria has several state and federal laws that punish libel, slander, defamation, sedition, treason, forgery, fraud, and so forth. Not only that, a host of federal and state agencies, such as the National Human Rights Commission, National Orientation Agency, and the Federal Ministries of Information, National Cybercrime Adversary Council, and so many others were established by law to take on and address these issues. So are the sponsors of these bills not aware of existing laws that already address what is contained in these legislative proposals? Are they now saying that something is wrong with existing laws? Let's assume something is wrong. Can the inadequacies be cured by Turning out additional duplicitous and repetitive legislation. Has anybody been fired, punished, or held accountable for these inadequacies? Is there not an opportunity to amend or repeal existing laws, or must we throw money to every problem that rears its head? The public disapproval and anger these bills have generated seem to be well placed. Nigerians have other serious problems deserving of parliamentary attention, not free speech regulation. Nigerians want more than just laws. As my Wafi brothers would say, my law we go chop. We need laws that will make bread and butter available on the tables of all Nigerians. One in every five of the world's ask of school children is in Nigeria, particularly in northern Nigeria. We need laws that criminalize kids being out of school and the state governors punish for not building enough schools. We need laws that criminalize public officers going abroad for treatment while Nigerian hospitals are left to rot away. We need laws that castrate and instantly jail men who defy underaged girls. We need laws that guarantee jobs for every Nigerian youth that has completed university education. We need laws that make non-payment of worker salaries an impeachable offense for every state governor in Nigeria. We need laws that make social and economic rights, such as housing, healthcare, education, employment, social welfare, pension, justiciable. This is what Nigerians have asked me to advocate on this episode of the advocate, arrest my case. Excellent case. Excellent case. <laughs> I know you like the castrates bit. I like the castrates <laughs> bit because I looked I've at been, you when yeah, you said castrates. I've been badly wanting that um, castration as oh boy. Uh, punishment, yes, for such offenses. So, yeah. like you asked yeah. me, who will make these laws? Who will make these laws? Yeah. But also, but there's you definitely know, that people you know, who make the laws. Eh? The we need will. to consistently <laughs> talk about it so that those people can come up and then make these laws. Mm. The electoral process. Does it allow good there people? Are people? There are good people. There are good people in our parliaments who have been overwhelmed by the few bad people. Right. If few you, bad people. Yes, few. The bad people are very few. I, I can tell you, the bad people are very few. But they have overwhelmed. Do you, no. Do you mean the instigators are few? Because yes. I may not instigate things, but I'm yes. bad. Yes. And I, I wait for it to be yes, done, and then I, will, I yes. put my weight yeah, behind it. The instigators are few. There are many they are few. bad yes, people. Yes, I, I agree. Why I don't you. accept that? Because no. the previous uh, advocacy we made about um, pensions, is it not these people that get behind themselves to pass laws that Correct. enrich that, them? The question yeah, should be asked. should question, be voting against them. Some the question question they like drugs. It's obscene. The question, you award yourselves let me ask you. you let me tell it. you one. 
there was a, I can't really remember the state now, when he was speaker, a law was passed when he was speaker because he didn't have a say in the process, even though he was a speaker. But when he became, eventually became governor, the first thing he did was to repeal that same law that he passed as a speaker. No, but you know, because a few, it depends. That, I'm, I'm dealing with the, the balance here. Yeah. There should be other people like him who will stand against the law. If not, why are laws like, passed that like, are not Like in, in Zamfara favor? now, you have, what, what happened in Zamfara, for example, is the fact that you had, it was an APC state. Now is a PDP state. And PDP would want to show to the people what that, bad was look, going on, yes. right. this was the bad that was going on, yeah. and we can do better. Right. And, and so the first thing they did, when the former governor complained about pensions, they repeal it. So that, you know, everybody's now praising them. Uh, and, and, and so, it doesn't mean that they are different. No, we know they're not. Also, My issue is you, so you're you saying that there's few, people. Yes. few good. Um, we, no, 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 for me, the majority have to be if bad. You keep bad. Talking, Otherwise, we won't be getting the kind if, of thing we're getting. If we keep where talking we're about what I'm, what I'm by encouraging inefficient is, governance. If we keep talking about this, you will prick the conscience of many of them who have been overwhelmed by these few bad people that will say, don't bother, you can't be the one to change the system. I'm still, Join us. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to understand okay. what would bad. be the benefit of gagging people. The masses. No, no, from because it's, speaking people have already said why. It is, I, it's sorry, to propagate I, I, themselves in power. So that nobody yeah. can They will choose the next president them. after yeah. this one. It will be somebody who is without criticism. With, the, in the same, with the same agenda as them. It's about continuity. You see, in life, truly, it is good to have continuity. Mm. But when a bad person is the person that wants to continue what he's doing, Unchecked. that's when, you, that's when you, you, you complain. If you had a brilliant person, everybody is going to hospitals, yes. everything is working. The and then, and, and he and he almost looks like he's anointing the next person. You yeah, would actually yeah, believe him when he says that yes. man there should be the next president. Why, the why they want to shrink these spaces is you say the greatest obstacle to man is fear. Right. And it is man-made. Mm -hmm. mm. and, and so the only way you can perpetually perpetuate yourself in office mm. is to create fear. fear. Mm. And that's what we do with religion, right. you create fear, mm. and then you pretend to provide a solution. Yeah, that's right. In politics also, you create fear mm. in the mind of the people, yeah. and then you pretend also to provide, provide a solution. solution. So when they create fear in the mind of a lot, majority of Nigerians, even I, I, I can bet you that as you were coming here, there are some friends that you will call that we are going to do this. Ah, please be careful. Absolutely. Because that fear is already there. The reason why he was part, another way you look at it, if you feel that we have good people, yes, we have a lot of good people in Nigeria. But they intimidate others. And again, the way we get po certain positions in this country, they make it such that you find out that somebody who is the lead gets someone to follow him. And because of that, he sees that as a favor. And if he said, I want to do X, he will follow him. Yeah. So he might not really be a bad person. So immediately he sees someone <laughs> that can give him good direction, he will quickly follow and do the right thing. As you can see, I'm the people's messenger. I didn't send myself. <laughs> After the break, the opening lines of Chuka's advocacy will make it clear that our man Chuka no descent. Okay, yeah, that's right, oh, Vicky, I know Sendo. It's time we stopped suffering and smiling and started suffering and speaking out. Water lighty, food do housey. Now, original stuff ahead. Imagine a heavy load on your head. Now think metaphorically, that would be suffer ahead. Then they tell us now, now 1990 then will give us water for United Nations Special Program for Third World Countries. I wonder you will give me water drink. 1981, Fela and Nicola Pokuti singing in the track, original suffer ahead. It's 2019 people and we are not even beginning to start to correct the situation. In the 1970s, we drank clean water straight from the taps in towns and villages. The source was the main supply. But today, not anymore. It's water from plastic polythene bags, affectionately called pure water. There is nowhere near enough electricity to conduct meaningful lives and business. The biggest change in this sector is the move from the name NEPA to PHCN, Discos and Jenkos and other paraphernalic names, but little or no power. Then rice, rice and more rice, but still not enough. And quality is so poor, no other nation will buy from us. 
Were it not for some imports, some of us would not know just how nice rice could be. Our yams, cassavas and fruits are not exportable in the main. Housing, failure. Everywhere and every government. No systemic approach to deliver at any level. Affordable, sustainable and even a little luxurious. My friend Dr. Chi Iro Mwanya delivered a talk that tells us what to do. Shame to every president we have had since independence. Shame to all ministers and governors, everyone since 1960. They posture as statesmen and women, as leaders and mentors. They are a total collective shame. The results are there, I'm not making up anything. While the secretary to the federal government continues to hold retreats by the week for government workers, he would do well to look at the archives of Fellas Music and select a track for each of his retreats. He will soon find that the nation is standing still. What a great way to start a retreat. I call this initiative Fela Sweeten's Government. Perhaps when we look back at old documentation, old music, old art, old buildings, we will remember that we are not making any progress and it will help us plot for the future. I, I agree with you, Chuka, straight I, 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 So I let me just to, make this point very quickly before because you, it was in my mind. If you remember the last song, oh, okay. <laughs> a commission for dustbin, no solution. Commissioner <laughs> went to London no to study how to ah, carry dustbin. Dustbin, no solution. In commission for dustbin, no solution. No solution. And, and so to date, we still have dustbins all over. So I agree with you. Let's begin to start every retreat yeah. with one fella track and yeah. that might send a good message. Mm. Yes. And I also agree with you because um, I think the point about you made at the end that we need to chart our course mm. because a lot of times you use all this big language, you know, you, you put a, your program out there and say this is my plan and every yeah. every governor wants to come in and have a program laid out. So it looks as if you're making progress. progress. But if, you're, if you actually have a way of measuring it that yeah. people can see that actually you're just going around in circles. Absolutely. You know, off, the, off the program I was telling yes. about my husband saying yes. a lot of schools are very good at packaging, they'll give you a report. But if you want to know, you talk to the child and you can see if the child is actually <laughs> it's not developing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we shouldn't fool ourselves. And the other thing I wanted to just point out, because um, Victoria in the previous one was saying we don't know how to manage. I don't think it's a matter of knowledge. I think it's a matter of wanting to do the right thing. You know, because clearly, you know, people when they're managing their own personal business, they know what to do. So they know what to do to make it more efficient for them. But when they feel that they're managing the country's business and everybody wants to take the one that fits them, then they become wasteful, they become greedy. So it's not, for me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. Yeah. So it's a conscience issue. Because the way, the way most of these people see Nigeria now is that is a nation about to collapse. Yeah. So grab what you can what grab you can. Mm. before it collapses. Yeah. But they also forget that if it collapses, even that you grab is not sustainable. It's not, yeah. So you won't even have a place to yes. keep it. Yes. So the better, the, it is better for us, rather than grab, look for a way to fixing the problem, and then without grabbing, you will live happily. You will live happily longer. Mm. Yeah. There's something that um, I, I think is part of the problem here. We like imported solutions okay. to problems. Like you were, if you said in the, in the 70s and 80s, people drank water from the tap. People, the world, Nigeria was a bit, I saw yesterday an old newspaper of 1977 or so. 74, 74. No, not traffic. Nepal, uh, ECN, elect, okay. Electricity Corporation, Corporation, Corporation of Nigeria. Nigeria. And they said notice of slight interruption, interruption of, uh, and they were apologies, apologizing to Nigerians that they would take light for electricity for a few hours yes. to enable them to undertake something. Some <laughs> and it sounded like fable for someone like me, as old as I am, mm. I've never witnessed something like that. Yeah, so, so there was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. So you can see the level of, but, but I think the problem is that we like solutions presented on power, PowerPoint. We like things that look flat. Some of the solutions Retreat are solution. actually things that require localized knowledge. Let me give you one example. There was a floating school in Makoko. Yes, yes, okay. All the houses in Makoko, the houses built on stilts on Todd Milan Bridge. Yeah, that's right. The people have lived there for yes. decades. Yes, yes. And they always have and built their is. houses with wood. wood. They have their local technology yeah, that they use right. to make yeah. those houses. Yeah. Yeah. We've never heard of any casualties. Casualties. And so. One day, they built a floating school. Mm. 
with the best of technology nice. from Europe. Published it with a lot of fanfare. It appeared in a lot of international journals at the floating school in Lagos. Access to education for young children living in Islam. Blah, blah, blah. This floating school, within a few days, collapsed. It, it, yes. The floating school, the amount of money that was spent on that floating school could have built hundreds of schools on land, on dry land. You see, but yeah. that is yes. to tell you that we need to maybe Localize. go back to the past Localize and our ask ourselves what are the things we did in the 70s and 80s. We us. need to give people confidence. Mm. So many people are not even doing their job. You have people employed in various sectors at the ground level that are not that were doing these jobs before. Yeah. You have someone who is maintaining the little boreholes in that little town or village, uh -huh. and he goes in and opens it a certain period of the day, right, and they yeah. maintain the pipes by themselves. They don't need to get Julius Berger and other people to fill in small, small potholes. They Correct. do it by themselves. <laughs> yes. We had this thing we functioning had before. Correct. So we need to go back there. And then people need to call their representatives to order, get them for town hall meetings, and then them account for what mm -hmm. they have done. Mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds like a plan. I, I where, like that. Where, yes. where it failed, which is back make to that localized. Where, where it yes, failed, local. was where you now started using the funds meant to manage and maintain these things to pay pension to some of these people, people. for doing nothing. Yeah. And so the fund that was readily available could no longer take care okay. of what they so had. Yeah, yeah, but but, 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 but the point he made yeah. about when you. Call town hall meetings, give account. Oh, these are the things I've done. These are the areas I made progress, I didn't make progress. There was a particular state that just conducted election, whereby governors from other states had to go and kneel down during campaign to say, We know he failed in the first time. Allow him. Yeah. Allow him. He will redeem himself, yes. And look, what, happened during, and come, what, what happened during the election? Just like there was a public consensus of failure. Mm -hmm. But what, what happened after that acknowledgement? Some bitter pills are best sugar-coated. We don't need any sugar-coating, however. We'd like to hear it from you, straight. So here we go. On hateful actions, speak louder than words. Osas Ewere says, love you all. Love Plus TV. <laughs> we love you too, Osas. No hate here. Iyobo Festus follows up by saying, hate speech is not Nigeria's problem. Doing the right thing matters. On Nigeria Divided We Stand, Tanebi 291 says, Thanks, Liberals. You are on the right track as contributor in media houses. Plus TV, you got the right person on your platform. Liberals has a fan club. Oh. <laughs> Rasta Manjaman says on the same matter, Aha ha ha, this might be the thousandth time I have heard this, but nothing happens. We are the problem or cause of our suffering. On the magic trick of the stock market, Kayade Diamond says, I was in SS3 then when Fashola implemented a 20,000 after school job for about two months. I bought shares with the cash. Man, I cannot remember where the share is right now. My country is a failed state. Total reform is mandatory. Like we said, no sugar coating. Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, fresh off the block, John speaks to wastefulness or underutilization where our brain resource is concerned. What's up, Doc? Hey, Chuka, good putting my brains to use on the advocate. That's for sure. I can't say the same for many of our skilled and gifted Nigerians, though. And the utilized brains in Nigeria, it is a human nature to move from one place to the other. Most will want to return to their roots, but quite a few may choose to make a new area their home. Some find themselves in a foreign land through special programs created by the government or institutions. Others emigrate on social or family grounds or due to certain difficulties, war or situations they find themselves in. Brain drain. This is a time coin to describe a process in which a country 
loses its most educated and talented workers to other countries through migration. It is mostly movement of individuals from developing countries to developed countries or areas of more favorable geographic, economic, or professional environments. But why? To mention a few, some of the reasons include seeking for better quality of life, employment with higher paying jobs, prestige of foreign training and intellectual trainings. In the past, to date, many Nigerians are seeking shelter in other countries due to security reasons, lack of basic infrastructures or facilities, or political instability. There is some negative impact, such as shortage of important skilled workers and professionals, loss of innovative ideas, potential future entrepreneurs, and the country's investment in education. However, there are benefits. Immigrants acquire new knowledge and skill, and it enhances brain circulation. In any case, Nigeria need to take action to utilize the situation positively, and most importantly, make use of the many brains still in the country. Today, there are many first-class graduates and professionals who are underutilized or not employed. Stakeholders and responsible parties need to strengthen existing research institutes and establish more, use our foreign missions to know the capacity of our citizens residing outside and promote collaboration. Stronger commitment from those trusted with power and authority to embark on multidimensional approach, invest in infrastructure, create an enabling environment, utilize the brains in the system, use those in the diaspora positively, make citizens feel safe and have hope in the economy. Still brings us back to all we've been discussing. Mm. The country is not ready to receive anybody that it lost. Mm. So when, so <laughs> if they go there and have better training and everything, they can't come back mm. because we're well, not ready to receive we, we happened, It happened in 2015 in this country where this selected, they found the best brains in Nigeria mm. in different global institutions and mm. brought them together to form a cabinet. Where? I think that was under the Jonathan government, right? To form what, yeah. like a committee of the cabinet, the, the, the ministers then. We are, we, most of them were among Nigerians' best, okay. whether in finance uh, or um, agriculture or um, um, communications. I think Nigeria then was in the news for a lot of positive things. Okay. Um, Nigeria was one of the fastest growing economy then. Okay. There were lots of things rebased. that happened. Okay, I think I know. After what the economy was rebased. Yeah. So I'm, I, what I'm trying to say is that right. it has what? happened when people that left to empower, improve their brains, okay. that Nigeria sought after them yes. to tap from the knowledge that yes. they gained. To but bring we them back. But, but, we don't but, need but, to lie hang on. on those at the top positions. Yes. Okay. We need it from the ground. ground, yes. ground. Yeah, I, I, I uh, uh, yeah. To some extent, uh, uh, the, the problem here is we have not even utilized the ones we have here. That's why. And so that's why, for me, yes. I agree to some extent that white people, you have more of Nigerian doctors in Saudi Arabia than you have, you know, in um, that you have Saudi Arabians as doctors there. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I thought it was South Africa. No, in Saudi yeah, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Nigerians. You have a lot of Nigerian doctors. Even in, there okay, even in South Africa. Do you, right. yes, do you yes. know that you have more of Nigerian nurses in America oh, yeah. than say the any other, Nigerian, other, any other tribe? Any other and, other and so because not necessarily because these these people hate their country. But they want Great better lives. Arena. They want opportunities. Precisely. And, and so when your country can't give you these opportunities, you're consistently going to lose your best hands Correct. to these countries. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Britain is talking about Brexit, but here they are creating opportunities for Nigerians and other to, countries yes, to, you know, come, to come, in. come in. Yes. Canada, do you know that the number of Nigerians that have left Nigeria between 2004 15 yeah. till now to Canada is unimaginable yeah. Yeah. because this opportunity, this country provides yeah. opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. So there were times where we had the uh, school exchange programs where we would send our students to other schools. China, Indians, and some of these countries will send their students to come learn here. But unfortunately, today we are not even, our, our research institutions are more like. Uh, 
houses for reptiles now, mm -hmm. they are non-existent, and everything now had been reduced to politics mm -hmm. and government. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to make mm -hmm. money. And we think that if we continue on this trajectory, mm -hmm. that five years, all these uh, laudable programs that we'll talk about vision, this vision, that, that you'll be achieving. The basics, until we learn to understand the impact of human capital development mm -hmm. in any nation, We'll just be deceiving. Yeah, I mean, I want house, to. I want to come in on that you because can't. you know, a lot, of, a lot of times I hear discussions, and I don't want to detract from what we're saying where they go on about the population. But I said population will never be the problem. It's the fact that we haven't managed our human resource. Mm -hmm. There are countries that are looking for, like you mentioned, that human resource. Mm -hmm. So, and then you know, also to buttress what uh, you, the point you were making, and I think Libros was also making, which is that you don't necessarily have to go and be wooing the ones outside to yeah. combat the people here. How yes. are we engaging them? And then this is where my issue comes mm -hmm. with the advocacy, though is that at the end, we always seem to be looking back to government. I think at some point, we need to make up our minds that government, at least for now, is not interested in doing the right thing. And maybe it sounds radical. And then say, what can we do amongst ourselves to network, to provide these opportunities for people? Because I came across a young man who is doing some networking among the youths in, in the technical space. And it's yielding great dividends. So we, who are maybe these NGOs, people like Victoria and, and the people like that, who can collaborate with other people, and, and create an enabling environment. For, let's stop thinking of government for now. Let's, let's, in a way, make them redundant so that they don't think that they're so vital they can be giving themselves life pensions. Mm -hmm. Let's create our own collaborative yeah, yeah, measures the, the to sector, engage our youth. But the private sector needs to work harder. And uh, I, I, I'm not even blaming government. That is the private sector yeah. I'm talking about They need now. to work harder. We mm. need to you know, create rewards for intellection. That is what I think is missing in our polity. Yeah. The private, you see, most of our big corporate giants in the country, what would they rather put their money on? They might rather put their money on entertainment, entertainment. than on so education that it will development. Produce. It will generate more. Yeah. So if we move, bring in, if we continue that shift until we get to that point where rewards, one of the rewards they put on entertainment, they can shift it towards education, where a young man can easily find scholarship. Yes. Look and at I all the foundations of all the corporate. Yeah. I have sought for educational foundation in this country. I don't want to mention it, but there is no entity that has the word foundation attached to it that I didn't go to. I didn't get because it was for education. Okay. But if I wanted it to Victoria. shake my body and my Victoria. hips, and maybe I would have Victoria. gotten money. Okay. What Kenny is saying, I, from, I think, I, think yeah. I quite agree with you. This entertainment we're talking about, even sport, there were times in this country where companies would not touch okay. foreign sports. Okay. Nobody would touch it or sponsor it. There were times in this country where entertainers were earning less to nothing. Yes, but it took the private sector to galvanize it, you know, promote it, and take yes. it to the level yeah. that it is now that it's now sure a that big it's... time foreign yeah. earners. But also, if we can look at some other sectors, and even health, when the government institution failed, we also saw, you know, private sectors collab collaborating. That in some hospitals now tell you that they would sell bed spaces like you sell hotel rooms in a hotel, and people are actually paying for them. Okay. And, and so, if private sectors can come together, create, let take a sector yeah. and say, let's find a way of governizing this yes. and making it that cash cow like entertainers have done to their section yes. sector. Because if we keep looking at this government, government it's not going to happen. Because someone not went, I'll just give you yeah. a reason why. Nigeria's priority list. If priority list, education, health. No, 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 I agree. You know what you're saying. Why would we put what he's entertainment, he's telling, telling, entertainment No, no, forward. he's telling you why no, entertainment people, is attractive. People, it has been made attractive. People created it. Yeah, it has been made attractive. And then they made it attractive. So anybody, attractive anybody that wants to sell now believes that the easiest way I can sell so education is has let been me, made attractive. This, this has been made attractive. Mm. You know, once you that's, are... That's why I'm, I'm going back example, to my former edu point. Education. We need to make education in particular. I, I read one of your articles mm. yeah. where you were talking about school fees between even these, the um, mission schools in Lagos and the ones that none of them is cheap. But you find out that people decided to, you know, put in some form of effort to say, let us even invest in this sector. Mm. Otherwise, if we didn't have this, some of these private schools, my sister, the blow now would have been, yeah. you know, it's standards would have dropped significantly. You know, but I, we still had some cushioning. So if all of us at our different local level, forget government, say, look, you know what? Let's put all efforts. You know, I don't agree with you because in Rwanda, hmm. people are withdrawing their children from private schools and going to public schools. Yes. 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 As long as there are private schools, yeah. the public schools won't function. No, no, no they will. We need the private schools for now. Mm. But we need to stand up 
and push, we must have public schools to develop because chunk of the population are those that can only afford private institutions or mm. private schools, public, sorry, public, exactly. not, not private, mm. yeah. right? So if we don't fix that, it's going to be catastrophic yeah. sooner or so, later. So we're with you. So we're with you in that. And again, to add to that point, you find that NGOs or private organizations, they will want to make some uh, maybe uh, programs. They give big amount of money as a prize to to someone who had something to do with entertainment. However, they give some packs of Milo or Indomie to those that actually the cut education. their head in educational yeah. uh, so, competitions. Yeah. No, so it's, it's in true. line with that, we it's need true. to yes. Efficiency is the bridge between available resource and increased value delivery. After the break, a Kenes advocacy seems to be saying that we are more efficient or effective when we stand as one man. Few will argue with that. Yes, few indeed would argue with that, John. But do our actions or even reasonings mirror our mental assent? That's the problem. All for one, that's my advocacy today. I'm saying we're all in this pepper soup together. Listening to a recent discussion on the participation of women in politics, it was apparent that the flavor of the conversation was that women are their own worst enemies. They fail to put up when given the opportunity, so essentially they should quit whining and shut up. Oh, really? So let me pose this question. Are we happy with the caliber of men, women, young or old politicians that present themselves as options for the people's endorsement? Do we see thugs or technocrats vying for the most noble offices in the land? At this point, I want to table as evidence what I have captioned Exhibit 1. The fact that we're only just hearing of our president's condemnation of the barbaric killing of a woman leader of the People's Democratic Party Mrs. Salome Acheju Abu, who was burnt to death in Ochadamu, awful local government area of Kogi State. The killing was being referred to as an allegation, but since the condolence visit of the governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Barista Natasha Akoti, the word allegation died a silent death. Barista Akoti made a significant statement, and I quote, humanity stands before party leanings. Nobody deserves to die in such a horrible manner. We and the entire Nigerian women are with you to make sure justice is served. So I ask again, do we see thugs or technocrats vying for the most noble offices in the land? I should rest my case at this point, since what I hear resoundingly from all quarters of our great nation is that essentially politics in Nigeria is currently a game of thugs. Nonetheless, to couch my point, I will emphatically say this. The reason we don't see women participation in the political space, which would be the long awaited game changer, by the way, it is because of the, the godfathers and career politicians who are more interested in self-help than people, people's service. The decay of Nigerian politics and its distinctly unrepresentative brand is not a woman problem. It is all our problem. It is ironic or perhaps symbolic that against such a social and political backdrop, we're commemorating the elimination of violence against women, November 25th. So my advocacy is that first and foremost, we, have to, we need to have a change of mind. We need to stop separating issues and appreciate that we are all in this pepper soup together. Then we need to take a leaf out of Barista Akoti's book and stand against the injustice of others via a social media protest. Let us each take a stand today Start with hashtag justice for Salome Acheju. Post and keep posting till they get the message. I've done mine. An injustice against one is an injustice against all. All for one and one for all. That's what I say anyway. If you post and keep posting and keep posting, if we do not stand up against it, we will just post and it will end in posting. No, but you see, that's where I, because... I disagree. Because that um, pension thing, I think it was the social media outcry mm -hmm. that led to this, this quick withdrawal. And if the social state, media has no. not been effective, why are they have they developing a social media? Yes. Why are they really want social media? They are afraid. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they are, yes. But... Hashtag this. Mm. Hashtag you keep mm -hmm. posting. Bring hashtag. back our girls, yeah. How, exactly. So we posted hashtags. Some people even used it as campaign. At the end of the day, as I speak now, the girls are still there. No, so what I am saying is we should, we should go beyond the hashtags. We've done hashtags enough. I don't know if we have. If one. we have, we have. As we in have. Uh, United if, behind if, a cause if, and pushed it and pushed it till it was Kene a global phenomenon. And Victoria had sat down at home behind their phone and hashtagging, they wouldn't be here. 
there's need for us at some point in these things to Get stand up, up leave our comfort zone yeah. and do something, push for something. Yeah. You heard those uh, ladies that we are singing, who no want Yaya Bello, ta, 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 ta. They stood up, they didn't sit behind their phone to hashtag. Like uh, Bob Marley said, those that are against us are not hashtagging, they are out there. And, and so we also need to, at some point, well, I believe, yes, there are a few things to hashtag, but at some point we need to leave this hashtag and move out there. You saw the boys also on, on, on this point, running up on this point, so that I hit the floor. Some people also went to the DSS to say, look, we are here. Release Shore to us. While the rest of us were hashtagging, they went to the DSS office. At least that's a statement. Even if the DSS had thought that Nigerians were just going to fold their hand, they would know that not everybody would fold their hand. Because if we do that, a time will come when they'll realize that, look, you can't kill everybody. Yeah. You can't jail everybody. But if you will leave a few and then the rest of us are hashtagging, then they will just wipe out those few, and then the rest. Okay, like, I uh, disagree, but let, let other people. No, speak. no, no. no I, I agree with I agree with liberals that online action, online tweeting, has to be matched with offline action. No, that I agree with. You know, the for you to create that kind of momentum, momentum, and influence change in a way that is also sustainable, because there is always a disconnect between. Online, this is what they call them online. You can be a warrior, you can write anything. Keyboard warriors, you know, keyboard warriors. But out there is like audacity coming out of the keyboard and coming to match whoever you're challenging face to face mm -hmm. is an audacious Actually, act. No, Victoria, let me just make and this point, but oh, let's check out. And that, yes, and that I, I have two points to another make. Yeah. Level of mm -hmm. Yes, I have two points to make. One is to do with numbers, uh, that's still this online offline thing. Mm. If I am if I'm followed on Twitter or Instagram by four million people, I can I can I can keep to online. Because when I say something, too many people will get it and repost and twelve million will get it in no time. And before you know it, I'm even talking abroad as well, mm -hmm. then I'm denting the image of that organization I'm attacking, yeah, yeah. whether it's government or a private yes, institution. Yeah, so that works to that extent, you know, where people who are influencers, as they call them, mm -hmm. are, can be quite important mm -hmm. if you are an influencer for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then there's chronology of things, that things have to ha happen with time. What liberals is saying is correct, that yes, we must go out and fight. Mm. But there will come a time when there will be enough fighters. Mm -hmm. At the moment, there aren't enough. And the system is set up in such a way, therefore, that the few people who would go and start chanting outside the DSS office can be taken down mm -hmm. easily. And so that's where the rest of us don't want to go there and be taken down. Mm -hmm. That means that we need, we need time. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to take, look, this thing could take us 20 years, you know. Wow. Uh, Sometimes we shouldn't no, behave no, like, okay, let's no. Let's Things change fast. Technology no, just that, like the way the social media. Yeah, so yeah the change can come with media. a surprise. Okay. In the, in the, uh, Yes. the actions mm. liberals was talking about. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Because you have to use that to get to people. Yeah. Otherwise, I won't just be in my house or in front of my house. If somebody comes in and say, hey, let's go and shout at the government's house, I won't yeah. go. I need yeah. to understand what he's talking about yes. first. Yeah. So it's important we still have to use the yes. social media to yes. achieve any other gathering. Because you can to use get it the mass, to be, critical yeah, get mass. The mass and also be able to organize yeah. it so that it will be rowdy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. If you just get people, then it will be to similar things that happen at the shop. Yeah, I mean, thank you for that. I, and thank you. Because I, I, the yeah. point I was going to make is that I find that my own acts to grind with the whole Nigerian situation, that a lot of us are frustrated, but we don't seem to have a collaborative mentality. So people are individually complaining about things, mm -hmm. but they're not coming together. Mm -hmm. So I said, and a lot of times when you tell them, okay, let's go and protest, they're worried for their safety. So I said, okay, at least commit, do make one commitment. It's like when they stay in churches, put up your hand and stand up. They're Enticing you. So the hashtag is like a, the first step. At least the hashtag, show a concern for Mrs. Achedu's um, remembrance. Mm. If you put that on your, your, your thing, it, it drives visibility, drives awareness. Mr. Putin, okay. if she hadn't gone there, they were already calling it an allegation. She's gone there now. And I feel that the weak point of our government, as they are, because they're cowardly, they don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be shamed. Absolutely. Social media does that to them. Yeah. That's why they're That's why they social need media. To, yeah. So they need to be brought out into the open yeah. and expose some of these things they're doing for what it is. And, and you to, know, to you're being greedy, you're this, being, uh, you know, you to, expose to it. add to this, you, you, I, salute, I salute women like you that come out to speak up. I've had calls to invite you know, women to programs like this. They'll tell you, um, mm. I can't. Or they give you 1,001 reason why they can't do it. In some cases, they say it's a man's thing. Job, yeah. Yeah. And, and so we, 
you look at in spite of the many opposition against um, Natasha Akboti's mm -hmm. candidature, yes. including those where right before the INEC the chairman, the right <laughs> before the Inspector General of Police, mm. how she was beaten. beaten. beaten yes. She's still too tall. Mm. And, and so that should also stand at us. You know, a catalyst mm, for so many other women Correct. to inspire them Correct. to come out also and stand for you know what is good. Mm. We remember, in, like we always say, good those days. It took the Aba <laughs> women yes. in 1929 yeah. to stand against oppressive task regime mm. yeah. of the colonial masters who had black collaborators. You know, being so, a vocal woman is very lonely. It's hard. Whether you are talking at public events, whether you are attending mm -hmm. in pop conferences, yeah. whether you are okay, holding okay. cup shop, yes. it's, it's rare to find Many female few, voices yeah, yeah. that are willing to come out to discuss daring issues. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, but we need the encouragement of men. Uh, yeah. I wish there was more time. Well, the expression standing together implies that we first have to take a stand individually. So I agree with my fellow pan panelists. We're all about civic responsibility after all here on The Advocate. So keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. We look forward to next week's edition, where once again, we get to rub minds with you. Same time, same, same channel. Till then, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye-bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, terrible. <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.